So this is an interesting question that's come up recently. AutoCAD or ARCHICAD? What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Recently we discussed the differences and similarities between Revit and ARCHICAD. However, today we really want to focus on the differences between AutoCAD and ARCHICAD. Now these two are very similar but very different software and there might be a very specific reason why you're looking at one or the other. Now if you've been following my channel for a while now, you know I've been ugh, stuck in a cast for a little bit. I hope that was in frame, otherwise that's just going to look like me being an idiot lifting my leg. But I ruptured my Achilles a couple weeks ago and it's slowly recovering, slowly healing. By the time this uploads, I'll be going to the specialist tomorrow probably. Um, so hopefully some good news there and next time you see me on YouTube, hopefully some good news. But for the simple fact that I'm still making these videos, making sure to get some good content out to you guys, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Okay, so let's start by talking about the actual price differences between these two softwares. AutoCAD and ARCHICAD are both very powerful, but yet very differently priced software, if I can put it that way. For example, AutoCAD only costs $350 a month to get going. It is an ongoing subscription that you have to pay for every single month and there's no way out of it. If you stop paying for it, you stop using it. You can also pay $2,805 roughly yearly if you don't want to pay a monthly membership. This is one way to just flip your costs up front, but it depends on your cash flow if you're going to be able to do something like this. Now with ARCHICAD, there's a big difference here. ARCHICAD, you pay a very large chunk up front to have the license and then you pay a yearly fee to renew or to upgrade if you want to. If you don't want to upgrade to the next license, you don't have to pay anything more. So for example, in Australia, it's been a few years since we purchased ours, but it was roughly $5,500 to $6,000 per license of ARCHICAD. Now, if we decided not to upgrade for 10 years for some reason, over those 10 years, it would have only cost us the original investment. If you do decide to upgrade, it's roughly about $700 Australian to upgrade to the next version. Now, thanks to the guys who commented on my last video comparing Revit and ARCHICAD, I actually have some really good figures from around the world of how much ARCHICAD costs. So if you're interested, in the UK, it is about 2,900 and 50 pound plus tax with a 400 pound yearly upgrade fee. It's 3,750 euro once off or 150 euro upgrade fee every year. And it's about 3,970 American. So all of these, if you translate it and do the um, currency conversion, they're all roughly about the same. But regardless of that fact, ARCHICAD is still a very, very large upfront cost Basically, it's two years, almost three years of paying for AutoCAD just to get ARCHICAD straight away. Now that fact alone could have just swayed your decision. Knowing that you have to pay a bucket load up front versus a couple hundred dollars every month might be the tipping point for you. If price isn't your main concern, let's dive into this a little bit more. Let's take a look at the formatting and the program itself. So as we all know, or probably should know, AutoCAD is a DWG based format. It produces all of its drawings in predominantly DWG form. Obviously, you can export these files as a whole different host of different uh, file types and it depends on the, the software that you're trying to use with AutoCAD, so it does give you some freedom there. However, DWG is its main purpose and the more common export file type that you will be sharing with other people. The limitation of DWG are pretty simple. It's all 2D lines. A DWG file is floor plans, elevation sections. The good thing about this is it means whatever you can really draw and imagine on paper, there's a good chance you can create it on AutoCAD, which takes away from the limitations of AutoCAD. AutoCAD isn't limited to just architecture or engineering. You can do absolutely anything. If you want to design watches, phone cases, furniture, uh, lighting, cameras, absolutely anything that you can think of. Again, if you can draw it on a piece of paper, you can create it on AutoCAD. But again, we come back to the fact that it is predominantly 2D lines. And if you don't know what you're doing or if you're just starting out, you're gonna be drawing 2D lines for a very long time until you figure out the 3D capabilities inside AutoCAD. Whereas when we look at ARCHICAD, it's a PLN file. 
It's a custom file exclusive to Archicad. You can't go ahead and import that PLN file into AutoCAD or any other program, it just won't work. You can, however, export your files to DWGs or to any other file format that you might need for your consultants or your clients. The thing here with Archicad, as it is in the name, is it's architecture related. Anything to do with architecture, it's very, very good at. Anything not to do with architecture, well, not so much. Now, Archicad isn't specific to architecture and architects. It has implemented the engineering side of things a lot more over the past few years. So you can actually use this software as an engineer, but more than likely, most engineers are still either on Revit or AutoCAD for the simplicity sake of 2D lines. One of the best things about Archicad is when you start using it, everything's in 3D. So for example, if you were to open up the template straight away, never used Archicad before, and just start drawing some walls, go to 3D mode, all of a sudden you'd have almost a whole house developed. Within maybe a five minute learning curve, you can put together a very basic, full three-dimensional four-sided house with a roof, doors, windows, the work. For example, AutoCAD is predominantly a 2D program like I've said before, which means everything has to be manually calculated. You have to count the number of doors, the number of windows, create your own schedules, create your own Excel documents, and kind of understand the whole building as a whole on a whole separate layer. Because again, it's either a block or it's a 2D object, but in some way, shape or form, it isn't all scheduled in and built in as powerful as it is on Archicad. So for example, the same thing, if you were to put in 104 doors into a project, and obviously your template was set up correctly, you can quickly and easily list all those 104 doors understand what door handles they have, what hinges they have, what color the door needs to be, what the architraves are. You can go into all the details, is it hollow core, is it solid core, and actually give that information to a builder. If you're a student watching the channel, first of all, thank you so much for watching. I hope your career goes really well and you're loving it so far. But as a student, you probably don't have to worry about scheduling and details to this level. It is something you should know and should learn because eventually, Everybody wants what they designed to be built. To actually build this development properly, well, there's a number of things that are gonna happen. They're either gonna quote it too low and then sting you with a whole bunch of variations or your client with a whole bunch of variations throughout the process, or they're just not gonna to want to price it anymore because there isn't enough information on the documents themselves. So they're just guessing. Okay, so now let's talk about the design and documentation stage of architecture. Considering this is usually about 50 to 60% of the time spent on a project and 50 to 60% of your fee as an architect, engineer, whatever you might be, there is a lot of time spent on this section. AutoCAD can document anything. And I mean genuinely, you can document anything you want. You can understand every single corner and crevice of a tunnel if you want to, or how the leg on a furniture chair is molded, I don't know. Whatever you can basically imagine, you can document in some way, shape or form on AutoCAD. And that is a huge win for the software. On Archicad, if it's architectural, you can document it. If it isn't, well then you're probably gonna waste a hell of a lot of time trying to figure out how to document this, how to create it and how to make it work. But if you were comparing apples with apples and you were documenting a house, for example, a very simple four by two generic, Think of the most basic box you can think of. AutoCAD would probably take you three times, if not four times longer to document this actual house versus Archicad. Now from a business point of view and from an entrepreneur side of things, Archicad means you're making four times as much per hour versus four times as little per hour. Now obviously, yes, AutoCAD is three times cheaper. So if you were doing only $6,000 worth of jobs a year, AutoCAD is definitely cheaper because you're $4,000 in front. But if it takes you a full year to do $6,000 worth of work, you could probably do four years worth of work with Archicad. So all of a sudden, instead of making $4,000, you're making somewhere upwards of $18,000 a year. And this is a question that people ask me all the time. What about 3D visualization in AutoCAD if it's a 2D software? Well, you have to remember that AutoCAD is still owned by Autodesk, the company that makes Revit. And Revit renders are actually really, really good. So once you know how to use AutoCAD properly, 
then you can actually create some semi-decent renders inside the software itself. If you wanna send it off to the Revit cloud or the Autodesk cloud, you can create some really, really good renders. So don't be afraid and thinking that just because you're going with AutoCAD, you're not gonna have any good renders. You will, however, on the other hand, have much better renders through ARCHICAD because of a variety of different plugins, such as Twinmotion. I swear, these guys should definitely sponsor this channel because I talk highly of Twinmotion all the time. I really enjoy the program and I enjoy using it. So Twinmotion allows you to render photorealistic animations in either a still image or a video, VR, walkthrough, whatever. It is very powerful and with integration of Unreal Engine 4, which is some of the highest cinema quality rendering software out there, it is only getting more and more powerful. You can actually export an AutoCAD file into Twinmotion, but it isn't a direct link. So if you found a mistake in your model, you'd have to go back to your AutoCAD file, fix up the mistake, export out that file, import it back into Twinmotion, re-upload it, change all the elements and keep working. Whereas with ARCHICAD and Revit as well, it has a very simple direct link plugin. So you find a mistake, you fix it, you click sync, it fixes it automatically, there's nothing more for you to do. So again, it's about that time management and efficiency in ARCHICAD versus AutoCAD. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons. The pros for each are kind of simple. The price is more of a con for ARCHICAD than it is for AutoCAD. AutoCAD is relatively cheap upfront and an ongoing cost. ARCHICAD is a very expensive upfront cost, but you get what you pay for. I believe speed, on the other hand, is a con for AutoCAD. It takes you a lot longer to do something on AutoCAD than it does on ARCHICAD. So ARCHICAD definitely wins in this category here. From a designability and design freedom point of view, in the architecture specific area, they both do really well. You can design absolutely anything that your brain can think of. From a non-architecture specific category, AutoCAD is a lot more flexible and free to do whatever you can think of whilst ARCHICAD is a lot more generic and limited, I guess, to the architecture profession. Knowing that you can import 3D objects which have full color and texture and materiality in them in ARCHICAD is a huge win for me because it means I can go in and put a whole living room in and model it down to the last detail if it's the throw rug, the pillows, the rug on the floor. And finally, I think a big pro versus con scenario out of everything I talked about isn't 3D modeling, isn't any of that. It's more so the scheduling and the automation of documentation. Understanding the fact that documentation is such a big part of architecture and it's the make or break between something being built and something sitting in your cupboard for the rest of your life is a very important factor. So the fact that ARCHICAD has or inbuilt scheduling that can automatically pick up all your doors and windows and anything else that you might require versus AutoCAD where you kind of have to manually estimate the area of walls and understand how much paint you might need or how much landscaping you might need. It's not as simple. Another great feature about ARCHICAD's 3D library is the simple fact it introduces a 3D like button. So if you want to go ahead and smash that like button to help the algorithm and help this channel grow, that would be greatly appreciated. So at the end of the day, what's my verdict? Well, I think if you don't have the money to spend on ARCHICAD, which is a very, very expensive upfront cost, then AutoCAD is clearly the right decision because for $350 a month, it gets you into the game, it gets you into the software, and it gets you practicing your skills and your craft. If you do have the money on the other hand, and you're not debating between these two softwares based on that, hands down, it's a very, very simple decision, for architecture at least. If you're doing architecture, ARCHICAD is the very clear and obvious choice between these two programs. Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. It hugely impacts how this video gets thrown around YouTube and how the algorithm works. So again, it is genuinely appreciated if you do. And if you wanna see more of this content, make sure you subscribe as well. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you next Monday.